Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another week. Um, you'd have missed a bit this week. We were out, uh, obviously, with the digger, and the head scrubber was out. Um, today, look, there's a bit of a bit of a mix-up. Um, just the job I was to go out today. I can't go out today. I have to wait till tomorrow. So, a bit of a loose end now here at the minute. And what I'm doing, as you can see, all this pipe is rolled out. Um, is the other day when we were spreading pipe actually burst in me we were just finishing so that was lovely it worked out nicely literally i said to the lad in the pump you can be knocking it off and just as the words were out my mouth pipe burst so what i done is i tied a knot in it the other night uh, just to roll it up i rolled it up and yeah obviously it ripped inside there somewhere so i cut after i pulled the knot in it's gone really tight so i couldn't loosen it but as you can see our outside jacket was starting to delaminate in that section um a few more rips up along but luckily we're not losing too much we're only losing maybe 35 feet that way so also anyone that has pipe uh i don't know whether this should happen this isn't the bad section i cut it and it's kind of after the inside jacket has come away from the outside one don't know if that should happen i don't think it should but um anyway what i done is just cut out that bed section rejoin the pipe shove down the sleeve so with an extra sleeve and they are not easy to get on let me tell you um your piston goes back to here and what i have to do is beat it off the bit of timber so I know a couple of lads were telling me how to do it, so uh, if you're watching, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to connect up again, and I'm going to roll it up. Hopefully it'll roll up nicely for me, um, but I can always, we're living on a quite enough road in fairness, so I can just back up the road there and straighten it out some bit, and start reeling. But um, to be fair, once I start reeling it, I can't see a complication, so... Set the camera up there and you'll be able to see the pipe rolling up. Well, how about this for a view? But um, as you could see there, I had a rag shoved into the fitting. Now that was already done, but why they do that is if your fitting is just, you know, if your clamps aren't squeezing enough, just put something in underneath the ring and it'll, uh, it'll kind of bush it up. So I'm going to attempt to pull up this pipe now. Hopefully, it'll all go according to plan uh, if it doesn't god only knows what we'll do but uh, i'm sure we'll figure something out so once we get some bit of tension on this we'll start going backwards a bit all right gonna pull this small bit back now You just need some small bit of tension to get you started and once you have a bit of, bit of pressure on it, you should be a weight in. Uh, obviously you should be wiggling forward and back, but I just want to get enough on the roll to get the pipe straight in front of me. So... In my defense, it's the smallest raptor I have, so what could I do? Um, I'm just moving a few loads of stuff. We scraped off these roads, as you can see, there's a little bit there now. Uh, we scraped off these roadways, and I'm just moving the stuff there while the two of us are around. We may as well get this job done. Question now for all you styre heads. Uh, did all the CS's have this dash? I don't know, because I only ever drove a CS once, so I don't actually know. But, um, Obviously, the newer one, CVX didn't have this dash, but just wondering, did the did the one or sorry the CSs have that dash? And the Oaks before them, I wonder what kind of a dash are they? I must look that up. Uh, those, you know, eighty-one thirties and that kind of stuff. So uh, hit me up in the comments if you know what kind of dash a CS had, and when did the CSs stop and start? I, I actually know nothing about CSs. Uh, so yeah. Just came into my head there. Uh, let me know what the story with the CS is. Good morning, everyone. And um, unfortunately, look, you've missed out a good bit of what happened this week. 
I don't think there was any footage of him to think of work at all. Uh, reason being for that is it's very hard to get somewhere to sit the camera in the digger. I know last week it was kind of sitting behind me and look, I just don't think it made for the best view one. So I just didn't bother filming it. Um, there is a bracket to go around my GoPro to hold it on to with a handle or something like that. But um, unfortunately I'm missing a few bits of the bracket. So when they show up again, we'll be able to clamp it on. But, um, Anyway, what we were at more or less is we were scraping off a, an old farm roadway that was done, I suppose, 20 odd, 25 odd years ago, and uh, just cleaning it off and cutting back the hedges along it and uh, more or less maintaining it. So, because I know that farm has been let out now, and I suppose they just wanted to improve it for the new man that has it. Um, Today, as you can see, we're going piping. So we'll give a good look at the piping now today because we're no massive, massive pressure, and uh, it should be an easy one. Uh, we don't have a whole, we won't have a whole pile of pipe out, and uh, slurry seems to be good. Stop back and give a look at it last night. So hopefully it'll all go according to plan. Um, well, obviously we had torrential, and I mean torrential rain this week, so it's kind of really hampered everything. Uh, yesterday was yesterday with a few showers in the morning and uh, the rest of the day was fairly good but uh, it doesn't look great there now to be honest I'd say we're getting a, an old shower or two and of course tomorrow is supposed to be showery enough as well so look uh, definitely the weather is great no massive suitable conditions we're under serious pressure to get hitch cutting done um, thank god my father was able to take a day or two off and he's able to fall in at the hedge cut while we're away at other work because uh, we just had an, an, an ocean of it to do and I had a man driving the hedge cutter for me earlier on in the week as well so look whatever about deadlines they've been silly and all that kind of thing that's just the way it is and we have to abide by them so uh, just to try and get as much wrapped up as we can we're not going to get all of it done uh, some of it we're not even going to be able to travel so we're not going to make a mess there's no point and uh, really it's not that urgent it's nice to get your hitches trimmed and cut back and all that but uh, sure if it doesn't happen another year isn't going to kill it so uh, that's kind of what, where we're at at the minute um, fairly low on diesel in this because we ran out of diesel this morning well, I knew they would brave up and all and just, it just skipped past me and just I didn't realise how much we had burnt. Uh, we have a fair shot of diesel burnt this year so far. Uh, more so than any other year I've, uh, I've been at this. Um, I touched it in the last video. January and February have just been crazy compared to what normally goes on. We've just kind of been tipping away. So, look, I won't complain. I'm very happy with that. Uh, long may I continue. Usually March is a bit of a lull, so we'll see what happens, but uh, still loads of slurry to go out. Slurry hasn't even really kicked off because of the weather, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a, good bit, a bit of good weather and we'll be able to see a lot of you have seen this already, but definitely works on some more spectacular Kerry countryside. Um, coming back here into Fina village, which is a small fishing village. And it also has Lieber, um, everybody knows who Lieber is. I have um, a kind of a dock there, there's a bit of a port there, and uh, that's where they load their ships. Um, more often than not, there's huge ships back there, and they've been there for a couple of weeks at the time being loaded, but um, nothing today. But yeah, a bit of worthwhile scenery uh, showing nonetheless. The lockdown has been absolutely brilliant for us because it's made the road so quiet and uh, easy to travel so definitely a big bonus in that well we're splashing away uh, a bit too thick a bit too thick for my liking but uh look we'll get as much as we can out here uh, because we don't have a desperate amount of pipe out so shouldn't run into any big bottles blowing it out and what have you but um once we get him out of kind of trouble really i suppose that's that's all he wants because i say it's fairly full so any few feet will make a big difference uh that's kind of what this Winter has been all about so far, it's just getting getting people out of trouble. There's been no great chance to get tanks out in, in favourable conditions. So that's just the way it goes some years, some years 
you get absolutely perfect weather when it comes to the opening period and all that, but uh, unfortunately this year isn't the case. Uh, the way I'm spreading, as you can see, our pipe is coming in above at the gap. It's going all the way down to the bottom of the field. Now the bottom of the field is a bit wet, so I'm not going to be going all the way down to the bottom now every round. But well, I'm basically snaking it or swanning it, some people call it. And uh, that way you end up with less twisting and uh, less that kind of stuff. Then obviously if I made my way out to that corner and I walked my way up and down the headlands and across the field, you're just trying to twist the pipe the whole time. Uh, whereas this way, you're kind of just gently moving the pipe up and down. And uh, you don't, it does, in fairness, it doesn't really twist doing it this way. So. That's why I'm doing it this way today. Um, just look, I, I, I had a feeling maybe we might run into thickness issues here. So you could have to stop it at any time really. And um, we're not trying to straighten pipes that are full of tick slurry. So that's the way we're working it today. You can see it back along now, but the pipe is starting to roll. And that's how you get the fish into it. Now it's not going to do me any harm because obviously when I go back up it'll roll back the other way. But um, the more pipe you're pulling sideways the more it's inclined to roll and that's where you get your twist. It won't twist now while there's slurry in it. But if you, we'll say if he knocked off the pump now that'll just twist and twist and twist. And uh, eventually the twists will make their way to here. And the back of, the, back of this here swivels and obviously if it gets that was stacked up wound tight enough it'll you'll see it here it'll start twisting and twisting and twisting and letting the knots out of it so i know i look i know a lot of people probably know what i'm talking about you also have a join in there and you need to be careful with the bower joinings because uh you could unclip them and now it is it hasn't happened to me and for people telling me it can happen so you just need to be a bit cautious with the way you pull them uh, the stocks are a lot flatter fitting and uh you wouldn't run into that problem with the start but um i would say personally if i was going to change the fittings i'd probably go for the type of fitting that the american guys use uh, it's, a, it's a very compact fitting and it's seriously strong as well so like we're kind of we're adding nothing compared to the american boys the stuff they get up to is crazy they're up in 10 inch holes 22 inch speed holes into the pump um they have these boat and this is hard to believe now they're boats to go out onto the lagoons and pump it and then they have these stationary pumps scattered all the way along if you just look up american pipe slurry on on youtube and you'll see lads pumping miles miles upon miles upon miles and uh i think there's there's a very good video on farm flicks as well of an american crew pumping slurry so it's very interesting the first man in Ireland to add pipe systems, as far as I'm aware, was uh, learnt it in America. That's where he see pipe systems being used and developed and um, kind of brought the idea home. And that, I suppose they're around, it could be around the last 25 years now. And um, usually any of the very early lads at it are still at it and they're doing an awful lot of it. In the past maybe five, six years, it's got a lot more common, uh, a lot more people are using them, but that's probably all to do with dairy expansion and how dairy farming has come on and developed and, you know, herds have got bigger and obviously there's more, there's more slurry about and slurry has to go out when, when it, naturally enough, a tractor and tanker wouldn't go into the field. I don't know whether all of that's going to change. I know there's more environmental legislation coming down the line and whether people will have to cut numbers or not I don't know what's going to happen I haven't read into it too much but things are always changing and we're always um, adapting and developing to the way things change so it wouldn't really worry me too much uh, what is going to happen well, that reeler is, sits on that frame you back into it and just lift your lifts and that's how you hold your back reeler it's locked up there for two pins in in the bottom uh, simple enough setup, but uh, it's, it's just agey. It's, it's an old setup, probably one of the original type of setups that they went with. Um, so look, when we kind of go on our fully mounted dribble bar setup, we'll probably have to do a bit of adapting to get them to sit in the backpack. Um, 
but I must look at other slurry cat setups because there was a kind of a similar one out there at some stage so just a small bit of modifying and have to go on to the dribble bar to suit that and it's not every dribble bar is suited so we have to be a bit particular about the way that's going to work but it's all doable and it's all pretty straightforward just needs a bit of uh, thinking about the way you're going to work those things well the inevitable happened um, it's got too thick for us so he's blowing air through it there now that's what's pushing this lorry out the compressor and once it once we start getting brushes of air we'll put a ball through it that will totally clean out the line um, we're getting a bit more lucky at this part of it. This this was kind of better than us at the start, but uh, it was us it was the problem more so than anything else. So uh, we'll get there slowly but surely. Um, what I'm trying to do now is pull the pipe straight, so it'll make it easier for rolling it up. Finished up our reeling up, but um, I'm just going to close my sunroof here now. Or maybe a lot of you prefer listening to the roar of it, 6354 Perkins, than listening to me. But anyway, we finished reeling up the pipe. Uh, it worked out straight forward because we only had around about 400 meters of pipe out, so it all fitted on the one spool and the reel, and um, the yard was very close to the field. So the guy in the pump just threw the hose into the field and I was able to stay in the one place and roll it up and roll it up nice and tight on the reel which is uh, handy. Um, anyway what we're going to do now is we're going to collect them two loads of bales um, just break the back of tomorrow's journey because we're two to collect again tomorrow so we will see how we get on. Um, like I said just make it a bit easier for us tomorrow so yeah. Uh, we're going a bit away from home, uh, we're going facing the sea, but we're going facing the sea at the, the another side of Kerry, we're out in the North Kerry, uh, is where we're heading here now, and uh, through Causeway Village, it's a small little village up here, and out for the coast road as they call it, um, a big tillage area, a lot of fine, fine farms along there, but uh, it's just silage bales we're collecting, it's not straw or anything, so... Once we get there and load it up, we have the TBT as well, and uh, she has the blue trailer on it, I have the red one. And once we're loaded and ready to go, I'll give you enough. a different way well sorry I came a different way than the way I went um, I just need to come back the same way with him because uh, just in case anything happened at least two of us are two of us are together and I'm just behind him and all that so that's why I'm going this way um, totally different loop around but roughly much the same distance wise and looking at the weather and it looks like it's going to break again early next week so we'll have to try and get as much done as we can um, in the next few days so unfortunately could be working on a Sunday but that's what it's all about uh, that's the joys of being at this job you have to go when the weather dictates and know more about it uh, if you don't want to be like that then I'm sure you'll be sitting at home most of the year so you just have to do what you have to do and that's all part of it um, so yeah, once we get these back, we'll unload them, we'll throw them off. Uh, I go and round up a few little jobs. 
Imers, free cattle and stuff like that. And once we've that done, then we will um, I'll move a digger for tomorrow. We actually have two diggers today um, in two different places. So I'll move a digger for tomorrow and I go driving that tomorrow. The lads will be moving meals and probably look slurry Monday and Tuesday, or sorry, Sunday and Monday. I'd imagine uh, that might all change. That's only the kind of the plan I have in my head at the minute, but uh, something or two might pop up in the meantime and we might have to go at that. So that's another weekly roundup for me. Um, I'm not quite sure how long this video is going to be, but surely enough in there to keep you interested and uh, show you enough of what went on during the week. So thanks everybody who's watched, uh, liked and commented and uh, most importantly subscribed through the course of the channel so far. I see the subscriptions are really jumping every weekend now. We're getting a couple of hundred every weekend, which is great. And uh, thanks very much. And we'll see you next week for when we'll we at something totally different again. So thank you and goodbye.